Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is lecture 5.1, Properties of Acids and Bases. Let's get started right away. Today, we're looking at two specific learning targets. Describe the common properties of acids and base, acids, bases, and salts, and distinguish them based on their taste, tech, ability to conduct electricity, and other observable properties. We're also going to talk about categorizing acid as either a hydrogen ion donor or a hydrogen ion acceptor as well as the other definitions of bases. So today, what are the properties of the chemicals that we will be using to dispose of our dead body? First, we need to know, what are acids and bases? Well, that's pretty simple. Acids and bases are just types of compounds. Almost anything out there can be categorized either one or the other. Any kind of solution you deal with, and even common household dealer things that you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis, such as lemon juice, bleach, milk and magnesia, milk, blood, all those things are acidic or basic in some capacity. Now when you take an acid, which is dangerous, and a base, which is dangerous, and you put them together, you're going to get a reaction called a neutralization reaction, where the acid and base actually neutralize each other out to make salt and water, which are both not dangerous. They also conduct electricity. The reason why all acid bases conduct electricity, and this is super important, is because when they are put in solution, it breaks apart into ions. It breaks into ions. Whenever you put an, an ionic compound such as an acid or base, it breaks into ions. Now what does that look like? It looks like this right here. This guy. See that? This thing right here. HCl is going to break apart into H plus and Cl minus. The water is going to come and attack it and make two different ions. The positive and negative charge that are now in the water, in the solution, allow for it to conduct electricity. Without these positives and negatives, it wouldn't conduct electricity, which is why salt water conducts electricity so well, because salt is an ionic compound that turns into ions in solution. So the key takeaway here is you need ions to conduct electricity. Without them, not going to happen. Ta-da! Works like this. Say you were to wrap a copper wire around a battery, hook it up to a light bulb, and each end to a, a, a diode. What's going to happen is the battery is going to allow electricity to flow into the solution. Now, this battery will work if the diodes have ions in the water to attract to them. The negative chlorine ions from salt would be attracted to the positive diode, and the positive ions from sodium would be attracted to the negative diode. And this would allow le electrons to flow, electricity to transfer, and the light bulb to be lit up. So what are the properties of these acids and bases that we deal with? Well, acids are sour. They conduct electrical current. They react to the base to form salt. They turn blue lipids favor red. Almost all of them contain hydrogen, and they're corrosive. Now, they also have a pH from 0 to 7. If we have a pH scale of 14 and 0, acids are right in there. From 0 to 7. That's how you can categorize them. They'll all contain hydrogen almost always in the front of their structure, like HCl or HBr. Those are acids. Now, on the other hand, bases are a little different. They taste bitter. I know a good example of a base is soap. Soap doesn't taste so good when you eat it. Trust me. Almost all bases taste like that. They're bitter. They're also, when you get them wet, they're slippery. They're slimy. Imagine soap, a bar of soap normally is fine. If you get that soap wet, it's going to be really slippery. These react with, with acids to produce salt. They turn red litmus paper blue, and they conduct electrical current as well. Almost all of them contain an OH minus solution, or OH minus compound, and they're all corrosive, which means if you pour them on something, they're going to burn it. So what does that look like? Well, all bases have pHs on a scale of 14 and 0. Bases are between 7 and 14. That's where all the bases are. So acids are 0 to 7, 
bases are 7 to 14, and bases contain OH, such as NaOH and KOH. Shazam! See the OH there? That dictates each one of the bases. Finally, last but not least, we have our salts. And salts are ionic compounds formed by a cation and an anion when neutralization reactions occur. And these guys, since they're ionic, they also conduct electricity. Here's what acids and bases do when you put them, when you put something inside them. They're really corrosive. So hydrochloric acid burns a coke can, but so does sodium hydroxide. One's an acid, one's a base. They're both really corrosive. They'll both burn pretty much anything you put in there. So it's pretty interesting to watch them go to business, right? They're going to destroy that can. Look at it go. And then we want to summarize this. We're going to make a little poster categorizing what an acid is, what a base is, what a salt is, what a neutralization reaction is, and talk about how those things matter and draw some pictures. So right here, we have a little clip from my favorite movies, Fight Club. Now in this clip, Brad Pitt takes lye, which is a really strong base, and puts it on Edward Norton's hand after he licks his lips and kisses his hand to produce a little bit of, a little bit of moisture. He pours the base on. When he does this, Edward Norton's hand burns. He screams in pain. It's a great scene. You should watch it. It's a lot of profoundness, but watch out for the profanity. It's not good. They talk about the burn, and right at the end, ooh, look at that burn. Ouch. Right at the end, Brad Pitt takes out a can of vinegar and pours vinegar on the base to neutralize it, produce water and salt, and stop the burning. Thank God. So what's happening at the chemical level, right there, where vinegar neutralizes the lye? Well, that's our next subject. What are Arrhenius and Bronze and Lowry acids and bases? So, we have two guys. This first guy, Mr. Arrhenius. Arrhenius was a chemist who first came up with the definitions of what acids and bases were. And he said that Arrhenius acid is anything that gives up an H plus ion when, uh, in solution. And he said that all acids should have an H in their compound because they're giving up an H plus. He said that bases, on the other hand, give up OH minuses. And that anything that's a base has to have an OH in its compound, so when it breaks up into its ions, you get an OH minus ion. Now along come two other chemists, Johannes Nicholas Bronsted and Thomas Martin Lowry. And these guys get together and they say, mm, you know, I kind of agree with you. That definition of an acid is pretty good. They donate hydrogen ion to the solution, or they give it. But actually, we've noticed that bases do something else that's very important. Many bases also accept that H plus out of the solution. And this is another classification as well. So let's see what that looks like. So we're going to label this equation right here with the acid, base, and salt, as, and then label it as Arrhenius, Bronson, Lowry, or both. Well, we start out by identifying each of the compounds. First, we know that this first compound, HClO3, is an acid because it's got a hydrogen ion in front. Whenever you see that, you know it is an acid. Lovely. Now it's reacting with KOH, potassium hydroxide. Potassium hydroxide, well that's an OH minus, oh, an OH at the end, which means this guy has got to be a base. Well, an acid and base react together in a neutralization reaction to form water, which is H2O, and salt, which is this guy right here. I know it's salt because HClO3 has gone from HClO3 to KClO3, which means it lost its H. And KOH has gone from KOH to KClO3, which means it lost its OH. This one lost the H, this one lost the OH. Where did the H and the OH go? to form the water. So, since this guy lost an ACE, an H, it's going to be both an Arrhenius and a bronze Lowry acid, which both say they lose an H+. And the potassium hydroxide is going to be an Arrhenius base, because it loses an OH and doesn't gain an H+. Otherwise, it would be KOH2. So you guys should all give this next one a shot right here. Label these as either acids, bases, salts, and bronze, Lowry, Arrhenius. Summarize that for me. Go ahead and work on the homework. 
And uh, I hope this helped. Create yourself in your learning logs, guys. Have a good one.